Good evening and welcome to this uh, year's Year 11 Preparation for Success Evening. Thank you for taking the time to join us. Can I say at the start a huge thank you to those of you that attended Virtual Parents Evening last night. We've been delighted to receive an enormous amount of positive feedback about the event. And I know that staff have been delighted to finally be able to share some feedback with parents face to face, albeit via a computer screen. Now, this evening is about understanding the up and coming mock examinations, how to prepare, how we can support, and what can be done at home to ensure the best of successes. You know that I wrote to you all earlier this week and outlined my thoughts and my concerns over the way in which GCSEs may be examined this year. There remains considerable uncertainty over the nature of the examinations and the way that the grades will be awarded. And whilst current guidance still states that we will see a summer series of examinations, albeit later in the year than normal, we've also seen Scotland and more recently Wales make the decision to remove these final external examinations. Therefore, it's essential that we are prepared. We may be faced with a situation where awarded grades come from centre assessed marking and evidence from within school, such as assessment data, classwork, homework, non-examined components and coursework, and of course, pre-public exams, also known as the mock exams. And I will keep you well informed of those updates as we receive them from the Department of Education or Ofqual. But for the time being, we must ensure that we are prepared whilst making every effort to reduce the anxiety and the stress upon the young people in year 11. And we're in this together. Our aim remains unfaltering and resolute, that regardless of the format that the examinations will take, we will support and help the students of King's to achieve their absolute very best. Now, throughout the course of this online event, we invite you to submit any questions that you may have, and our aim will be to answer as many of these as possible at the end of the session live. And I'm now delighted to hand over to Rachel Hopwood, Deputy Head Teacher responsible for Performance and Progress, to discuss the mock exams and the relevant support on offer. Thank you. Good evening, and thank you for joining us. Uh, this evening for our, well, our preparation for success. First of all, I want to give you one key message. Choose to be positive when you're approaching revision, approaching exams um, and approaching your preparations. So what's the plan? At the end of this, we really hope that you are able to celebrate with your friends face to face but also on exam results day. All the hard work is working towards. So I'm gonna start by giving you some key dates. In terms of exams, non-examined assessments are ongoing. You might see these referred to in letters as NEAs. There will be a PPE briefing the week beginning the 23rd of November. And then there will be pre-public exams or mocks between the 30th of November and the 9th of December. We wrote to you some time ago with the details of what will be covered for the content in each subject. We'll then have a PPE results day where students will be given their whole set of PPE results, mock results, on the 15th of January. Assuming that we have our summer series of examinations, they will start in the week beginning the 26th of May. There'll be an English exam and a maths exam before the half term with all others starting after May half term. In terms of revision dates, you should be aware that each Year 11 student has a mentor and has met that mentor already. There are currently bridging sessions going on to support and facilitate in order to prepare for the PPEs, mocks, between the 30th of November and the 9th of December. Bridging sessions everyone has been invited to, the core on one week and option subjects on the other. There's a five week round now and a second five week round between January and February. There'll then be revision sessions with targeted support for individuals in different subjects with a round between February and April and a second round between April and May. Students in Year 11 have undertaken work on learning to learn. 
In term one of year 11, building on work done in year 10, they've talked about how to revise and where the resources are to use. And this evening, both students and parents highlight some of these. At this point, I need to say, students have already either seen some of the material that's in this presentation tonight, or will have the material in this presentation tonight in the next few days through their tutors. Term two, students will think about looking after themselves and mindfulness that's to coincide with that time of mock exams or PPEs. Before in Term 3 we look at the revision plans and in Term 4 subject specific revision that's needed to best prepare. At this point where we think about celebrating at the end and what the plan is, I need to highlight to you some King 6 information for those who intend to stay here for 6th form. The virtual open evening went online on the 14th of October and that information is still there for each subject. King 6 applications are currently online and internal students have been asked to complete an application by the 30th of November if they wish to take up this opportunity. In December, students will have the opportunity to have taster sessions in some of the subjects before interviews and an induction day later in the year. So thinking about what now needs to happen, here's my list of 10 for parents to help and support your student at home. The first two, helping to plan, helping plan time to relax and supporting a balanced diet and regular sleep, managing their phone distractions, about making sure that students are okay and looking after their well-being. They might also need some encouragement and someone to talk to, with number four and number five. Before we think about the whole home as a learning environment, making sure that actually they're not isolated in their room, not compared to friends or siblings, not pressured about their outcomes, but let, but let know that you are proud of them whenever they try their best. So, other than these pointers for parents to help and support, if you think about managing stress, I'm going to take you through a, li a, a little series of information. First of all, understanding how your brain works. Then identifying when you feel stressed about when it comes to exams. Recognise anxiety and how stress can manifest itself before thinking about how you can create your own personalised revision strategies. Until recently, it was widely thought that we slowly stopped being able to learn new things, but the latest research has shown that that isn't the case. Our brain is plastic. It's able to shift and change and grow throughout our lives. So it's really important, because if we work out specific parts of our brain, like any other muscle, it will grow. London taxi drivers have a larger spatial awareness of air in, in that area of the brain. People who read Braille have larger finger sensor areas of the brain. Every time we learn something new, we change our brain. The brains of our year 11 are being worked hard at the moment, so let's make sure that they're looked after. And at this point, I think understanding the brain, it's important that we look at the two parts. So the amygdala, which is towards the base and back of the brain, flight, the flight or fight response, the freeze or stress response that we can have, gets the adrenaline going and can be really helpful or unhelpful. Then there's the prefrontal cortex. That's the thinking, the logical, the rational part of the brain. It takes in the learning and helps us to control that fight or flight and high stress. On this picture, you can see we have two brain scans showing the parts of the brain that are activated during stress. On the left one, the prefrontal cortex, the thinking part of the brain, is really well lit up. And that person is likely to be coping with the stress well. Whereas on the right, it isn't, showing that the stress is taking over. And that's a risky coping way. So it's important that you adopt the right mindset, and that's a real key to overcoming exam-related stress. Don't fight it. Feeling nervous is natural, and trying too hard to overcome it may prove to be counterproductive. Accept that controlled nervousness will not negatively impact on your performance. Be realistic. We'd all like to be Superman and get our revision done in five minutes, but it's not gonna happen. Equally, working 24 hours a day won't help either create a manageable plan. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Expect some difficulty. Exams are designed to be challenging and everyone taking the test will have some degree of struggle. Tackle self-doubt. Be realistic and optimistic about your capabilities. Visualise yourself staying composed and thoughtful during the exam. 
The worst thing you can do is assume that you're doomed at the start. So when we consider your brain, give your brain a workout. Try to stop and think, can you think about this another way? Could you behave differently? Repeat revised learning to get it firmly in your brain. Make action plans to do lists so that they organise your brain and share your worries to get them out of your brain. Reflect what's in your head. What can you change and what can't you change? But remember also, it is important to give your brain a break. Rest your brain by doing just one thing at a time. Have some screen downtime. Watch a film, play a computer game. Make sure you have a sensible amount of sleep. Take physical exercise and if it's a brisk walk. Breathe from your tummy, not your chest, to get oxygen to your brain. And take brain break breaks when you're working. Do something like chocolate, YouTube, video, quick game. So, if you feel that you want further information about helping students or your student yourself in managing stress, here are some books which we would highly recommend. Thinking about your revision, here are the top five tips that we've come up with. First of all, plan your time. I would suggest to all of you, you can use a paper timetable, but there are also some great sources online. This one shown here is Get Revising. If you go onto their website, getrevising.co.uk slash planner, you will find that you are able to prioritise for each of your subjects. And you use a confidence rating to identify where you should be focusing your revision. In addition, it allows you to put in times when you're not able to study because you have other commitments. And it allows you to add in the exams that you have got and when they're going to take place. Remember, a revision plan will help you to organise your time effectively. Planning your time being tip one. Work out how much time you have by going backwards from when the exam date is. Decide how long you want, to, you want each revision session to be. And refer to your goals. Remember to be realistic and to include breaks. But revisit your plan regularly. Tip two. Get yourself organised. Know the what and know the how. What is the exam focus, theme or topic? How long is it? What type of questions are they? What is this format or the structure? Organise your information. Make sure you've got detailed notes. Might be using a revision guide, it might be with a source online. Plan your revision. List and prioritise what you need to learn. Do your revision. Remember to try out different techniques and find what works for you. You'll know what works for you by testing yourself. Make sure that you undertake questions, particularly exam questions, but whether by topic or by paper. Mark them and make sure that feeds back into the planning of your revision and the next topics that you revise. Tip three, make it active. Students have seen this graphic before, but you will note that it is more likely that 90% of the information will be retained if they are teaching others. If, however, someone is simply reading through notes, it is likely that as little as 10% of that knowledge may be retained. Be as active as possible in terms of the techniques that you use when revising. One such technique, which has been a focus during this term, last term, uh, is using mind maps. It unlocks the potential of your brain and it allows your brain to be creative. It helps you to build new neural pathways by making links between the subjects, and it, it achieves improved learning and clearer thinking. There are lots of free places to make mind maps online. Suggested to you is mindmapfree.com. Tip number four, review, revise, review, repeat. It's really important that you do not just visit information once, you can see in the graph here that a visiting once and then the, the information is not retained. But by reviewing and repeating, more and more of that information will be retained and therefore you will be able to select it in an exam situation. And lastly, to take us full circle, get the environment right. At the beginning, we gave 10 tips for, for parents to support their students. But the perfect learning environment is really important. Think about where you are working. To be quiet, comfortable, warm room, well ventilated, a spacious desk and chair, books and files and notes to hand, not cluttered, limited interruptions and no distractions. It is useful to note that you should put your mobile phone 
on flight mode or remove it from your study area. Work with a clear desk and make sure you have that quiet space so you're not distracted. Last but not least, don't forget to have some time for relaxation. So, as a key message, we would say to everyone, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work. Now going to see a video with some top tips specifically for English, maths and science. Thank you. Okay, I'm Mrs Ashurst, I'm Head of English at King's and I'm going to run through some key information on the English GCSEs, so what they are and how best to revise for them. So students will leave Year 11 with two English GCSEs, one in English Language and one in English Literature. And for each of these GCSEs, they'll sit two papers. So let's start by going through the two language papers. So English Language Paper 1 is called Explorations in Creative Reading and Writing. And in this paper, they'll be given one source and have to answer four questions in the reading section to show their understanding of that source. In section B, this is the writing section, they'll be asked to write a piece of creative writing. So that could be a story or a description. Paper two then is called Writer's Viewpoints and Perspectives. Similar layout to paper one. So we have a reading section where you answer four questions. In this exam, there are two sources, so there's a comparative element to these reading questions. Again, section B is the writing section, and this is writing with a point of view. So students will be asked to write a piece of non-fiction, so for example, an article or a letter. So those are the two language exams. Moving on to the literature exams, English Literature Paper 1 is an options paper, and we've chosen the Anthology Poetry and Animal Farm for Year 11. So they'll sit two papers back to back, both 50 minutes long. Paper 1A is the power and conflict poetry. So students have studied 15 poems and they'll be asked to compare two poems in this section of the exam. Paper 1C is the modern text exam and this is Animal Farm. So students will answer one question from a choice of two on Animal Farm. Final exam then, English Literature Paper 2. This is Shakespeare and Unseen Poetry. So this is a full exam, they run straight through because this is the compulsory paper. Section A of this exam is Macbeth. So students will answer one question on Macbeth. They'll be given an extract from the play, but they'll also be asked to show their knowledge of the whole text. Section B is unseen poetry. And in this one, students answer one question on an unseen poem, so a poem they've never read before. And then there's a small question right at the end of this exam where they're asked to compare the first unseen poem with a second unseen poem. So this term for the PPE exams, students will sit an English language paper one and an English literature paper one. So that's where they should focus their revision for now. Okay, so how do we go about revising for these exams? Firstly, exercise books are a really good place to start. They're full of useful notes and they're a great place to go for a revision. At the moment, we can't take these books home, but students could ask their teachers if they can take pictures of useful pages for now, and hopefully they'll be able to take them home later in the year. Secondly, Firefly has lots of really useful revision resources available on it. And with the changes to the English literature exams this year, we've created a tab on the English page, especially for this year group. So students in year 11 at the moment need to go to GCSE 2021, which is the circles tab here, to find all the revision resources they'll need. On this page, so on this page, there's a revision audit document, which looks like this, and this is a really good place to start. So this is what the revision audit looks like, and it asks students to give a confidence rating for different elements of the exam. So I might start by looking at English Literature Paper 1, and I might decide, actually, I'm really happy with the Power and Conflict poems. I'm going to give that a rating of 5 out of 5. I'm pretty confident at analysing them. I can do that. And I'm happy with how to compare the poems. But actually, I'm not that confident on the contextual links for each poem. So I give that a lower confidence rating, and I know, therefore, that's where I need to focus my revision. And it says here, that I need to use bite size and the PowerPoint on Firefly to revise context for each poem. So that's where I'm going to begin my revision. So 
once students have established the key areas they need to revise, you choose the tab for the exam that you're focusing on. So I want to focus on English literature paper one because I want to revise the anthology poems and specifically the context. And I click on that tab and it takes me through to this page. We know in literature paper one, we've got both the anthology poetry and Animal Farm. So I'm going to click on the anthology poetry tab. And this is where we'll find all the revision resources for the anthology poetry. So there's a tab for revision resources. There's a tab for past papers to have a go at when students feel ready to do so. There's a tab for sample answers, a mark scheme so that you can see what a good answer looks like. And then there's a tab with extension reading for those students who are going for the top grades. And every page on Firefly for each exam unit looks exactly like this. OK, so just to finish up some general tips, if we just put it down to a few bullet points, because I'm conscious I've gone through a lot of information there. For English language, the key way to revise is reading different types of text, using the information and guidance both on Firefly and in English books to revise how to answer each question and then giving them a go, finding the past papers on Firefly and having a go at those type of questions. For English literature, key place to start is rereading the text or you can listen to audio versions, that's fine. Uh, using all the revision templates and resources on Firefly to revise the characters, the themes, quotes, context, make sure all the content of those texts is really clear. Good idea as well to learn non-quote methods. Some students feel like they need to learn loads and loads of quotes from these texts, you don't. There's an example down below if you follow the arrow of how you can still use evidence without having a quote. So it says in Animal Farm, the whip is symbolic of control. It's used by both Mr. Jones and Napoleon to symbolize their authority and control over the other animals. So there's not a quote there, but you're still talking about the method of symbolism, which will get you loads of great marks in the exams. Finally, same as language, have a go at those English literature questions. Once you've revised everything, give those exam questions a go. If you have any questions about these English exams, there's a lot to take in there. Please make sure that you ask your teachers and very good luck with all of your revision. In maths, all pupils have been provided with a question level analysis sheet from their pre-PPE and assessment week test. This shows them the marks they have achieved on each question and provides them with links to Corbett Maths and Hegarty Maths to revise topics they did not achieve full marks on. This should be pupils' first focus for revision for their PPEs. We have also provided pupils with a half-term revision booklet, helping them structure the revision of key topics. And they are being set weekly revision homeworks. Work solutions and video solutions are on Firefly for all the exam questions in the booklet and homeworks. Ensuring they have completed all of these will really be of benefit to them. The Maths Firefly page contains all past exam papers with mark schemes, work solutions and video solutions. The formulas pupils need to know are on the page. Along with the key command words. Also, to help with the geometry questions, there is a sheet with the exact wording pupils need to use in the exam to ensure they obtain all the marks on these questions. It is important that pupils do not just do past paper after past paper for revision. We encourage them to do a past paper. Mark the paper using the mark scheme. Write a list of topics they did not achieve full marks on and then concentrate on revising these topics by watching a video, asking their teacher for help or using a revision guide they have purchased. Then test their understanding of the topic by using the sets of topic specific exam questions found on Corbett Maths or the Maths Genie website. Finally, it is important that pupils turn up to the maths exam and the maths lesson with this equipment. Okay, uh, just a quick um, 
talk about revising science and making science easy to revise. Um, science is quite a big subject, uh, but conveniently, yeah, the subject is split up into three uh, smaller subjects, chemistry, physics, and biology. And all of these are also split up into smaller topics, and uh, as kind of we teach them as, um, there's about eight to ten topics in each in each subject. So chemistry, physics, and biology, we each have about eight to ten topics in them. And um, what you need to be doing at the minute is, is basically sh making sure that your revision notes are clear, you have all the notes that you need um, to refer back to during your revision. Now, uh, th there's no need to go and copy loads of stuff out. If you've got a revision guide, that's perfectly adequate. That's a very, very good set of notes. And it's just a simple case of referring back to these. It's not a case of copying things out or highlighting lots of stuff because that can make it a little bit complicated. You want to look at the topics in the revision guide, um, look at the topics in each subject, spend a good amount of time revising each topic. Um, on Fireflies, we'll allude to later on, there is um, resources that look at questions for each topic. Um, and basically, revise each topic at a time, practicing questions on each topic. And then when you've got the topic mastered or you, you know, you kind of you're going through it, then you can move on to the next topic. Um, but it really is a, the, the best thing to do with science is to break it down into these very distinct topics and make sure that you revise each topic at a time rather than trying to revise um, each one, one after uh, e e all at the same time. Um, you can then, once you finish revising a topic, you can re revisit it at a later date. You can come back to it, uh, use your notes, use the questions you've already done, and hopefully it will start to become really, really familiar the more you go through it. Lots of places where you can get really good information and really good help with your revision. Um, lots of different um, websites. BBC Biteside has been used for years. We also use some Seneca Learning, which you can sign up from. All of these contain quick quizzes, tests, information. They're a very, very good place you can go just if you just want to sort of get an understanding or certainly later on in your revision when you've done the hard work, you can just go into these places, do some really, really quick quick um, tests, quick quizzes, and just to ascertain that you actually you know you have a good understanding of everything that you need. Lots of resources out there on Firefly. We have set up the Firefly revision page so that you have past paper questions by topic. Um, this is something that I think is quite important because it allows you to revise one topic at a time. Just focus on those questions to do with that topic and continually practice them until they become familiar and you realise that actually there's a lot of things that are very, very repetitive. But also you've got past papers. I, I would leave past paper revision or use of past papers till towards the end of your revision. Um, otherwise, you, you kind of you're, you're moving all over the place. Um, but, you know, using past papers is also past papers, which again have been divided by chemistry, physics and biology. But the, the real port of call on Firefly is certainly where we have taken the past paper questions and we have put them into different folders depending on each topic. Thank you very much indeed for taking the time to join us this evening and I hope that you found it really, really useful uh, to hear of the support and the, the, the planning that is going into, uh, into the, uh, the plans for year 11 uh, for this year. As I said to you at the beginning, uh, we, there's an opportunity here for you to ask some questions um, and uh, I'm going to ask uh, Sam to just uh, read out any of those questions that have come in and that will give myself and Rachel an, opp an opportunity to answer any of those live for you. Um, so uh, first of all Sam have we had any questions please? We have indeed yes. Can I have the first one please? The first question asks will this presentation be sent out to parents after um, the end of this evening? Okay, thank you. Um, so really important, actually, that obviously we, we appreciate that, um, that the challenges of, of not being able to meet face to face. Actually, there are some advantages here in the fact that we have been able to record this session uh, this evening. So yes, very much we've recorded it um, and we will make it available to all parents um, on the same link that went out for you to be able to, uh, to join in. Rachel, anything to add? Uh, it's probably just worth saying that a number of the slides that you saw um, that I use, students have already seen through the launch of the mentoring programme and the English, maths and science part of the presentation this evening will be played to them through their tutors um, before in the next week, basically. Is the okay, plan. brilliant. Thank you very much. Sam, have we had any other questions? Yes. So the second question asks... 
Um, if a child has to go into self-isolation or a um, bubble closes, what sort of support will they receive from school in terms of virtual learning? Yes, obviously a, a really important question, um, and we, we recognise that uh, that you know we, we've had some issues with this recently, albeit with the Year Ten bubble uh, this week. Um, part of the answer of that depends on whether we would be talking about a, a whole bubble closure, so a whole year group, um, or indeed a, a part bubble uh, year group, um, which we've, we've also experienced. Um, but, um, but in essence, uh, the online package uh, is, is based around a, a blend between um, resources and activities on Firefly, um, but also uh, an online element that is delivered over Microsoft Teams. Um, and a minimum of those lessons would be 50% live, or to have some live element. Um, and actually our experiences uh, of doing this before is actually significantly more than 50% in many cases. Obviously it's very, very subject dependent and we prioritise those subjects or that revision that is obviously easiest for us to be able to do in an online capacity. Um, obviously there's some variation and some fluctuation in exactly what is on offered, but uh, that blend of Firefly and that 50% live lesson. And uh, obviously we, uh, we remain hopeful that, um, that we won't have to send the Year 11 bubble home. Sam, any other questions this evening? We have no more questions now. Okay, thank you very much. Well, once again, can I take the opportunity to thank you all very much for joining us this evening under unusual circumstances. As I mentioned earlier, send this link out for parents who were unable to join us and, of course, for those of you who have but wish to revisit uh, the information that we've put there. If I can uh, also pass uh, my, my many thanks on to uh, Rachel Hopwood um, for uh, her input this evening and, of course, uh, the technical side of it and being able to make this happen live and online to Sam Kale Dyke. Um, as ever, uh, should you have any concerns at all or any questions, please do get in touch with Kings, um, be that via the subject teachers or via the heads of house. And once again, thank you very much and I wish you all well.